Just pray that you'd give him the words to speak, give me the words to teach this morning in Sunday school. In Jesus' name and for his sake, amen. You may be seated. Turn to John chapter 19, but I think about the song, Victory in Jesus. I heard the old, old story, how a Savior came from glory, how he gave his life on Calvary. Well, that's where we're going to be this morning, is Calvary. But first thing I want to do is dispel some thoughts If you've seen any movies on um, the crucifixion, uh, you'll hear about the triumphant entry of Jesus when he rode in uh, to Jerusalem. But you know, I'm going to talk about a triumphant walk to Calvary. Uh, Last uh, time we were in John, I showed you that when Jesus came out of the judgment hall, they found one Simon and they put the cross on Simon. Simon carried the cross unto Golgotha or unto Calvary. And the Bible uses that word unto. Then in John, it says that Jesus carried it into Golgotha or into the mountain. So what you don't have is you don't have Jesus falling and stumbling and crawling along the ground and not able to carry that cross and then you have somebody coming and bailing him out. Jesus willingly laid down his life. So it's important to understand this. It is a triumphant walk. Remember we looked at it already when, when the soldiers came to arrest him. What happened? I am he. Pew! You know, they fall down. And then they don't get back up, and they asked him again, you know, who do you, he says, who do you seek? And, and uh, you know, he says, I am he again. They don't fall out again. I think they're still on the ground. And then they, he says, then he's in control. And this is what you've got to get from this. He's in control, and he says, let these go. In other words, he's given the orders to the, to the military guys, to the officers, and saying, you need to let them go, and, and he's telling them what to do. So it's interesting the way that it's portrayed in Hollywood. And listen, Hollywood, um, you know, they don't love Jesus. If they make a movie about Jesus, you know what it's about? Money. Do you know the, the, the big movie made, The Passion of the Christ, do you realize they were not even going to have the resurrection in there until a bunch of Baptist preachers who were advising him told him, you need to end with the, with the resurrection. So what do they do? They show the backside of Jesus, and then they... You know, they show this resurrection. You might say, well, I I love that movie. And listen, I I did a video expose on it because basically uh, it has a lot of uh, problems with it. I'll give you an example. Peter is standing there. I'm, I'm sorry, Mary is standing there and Peter comes running up. And what does he do? He trips and falls and looks up at Mary. Now, what is that? Well, in your mind, he's on the ground looking up to her as though he is worshiping her or bowing down to her. Now, you need to understand that. That's interesting when you're looking at it. And also, it's the stations of the cross. And there's this woman, Veronica, with a purple uh, scarf that now they, you know, later on they sold all over the world. You know, you got to get one of these scarves. Veronica wiped his brow with it. There is no Veronica in the Bible. There is nothing like that that happened. Jesus is not, we are not told that he ever fell to the ground. We are told that he took the cross at the foot of the mountain and walked up. And while he's there, while he's on that path, he's talking to the people around him. He says, listen, don't don't weep for me. Weep for yourselves. Why? I mean, he has been beaten to a a pulp, but it does not tell us what he suffered physically. It does, because that's not what it's about. It's about Jesus. It's about trusting in Him. It's about understanding what He did on that cross, what that cross means. It's not about looking at the thing and saying, hey, He was in pain. He was in agony. Uh, you know, He was sorrowful. He, he was shamed. Yes, but that's not what the cross is about. The cross is about victory in Jesus. That's what it's about. So when Hollywood gets your attention and gets your, pulls your heartstrings and says, look at this, look at this. Listen, you don't need to be looking at that. My wife refused to watch it. I, I was asked to watch the movie and to do an expose. So I got a video of it and I watched it. I actually got a video that came out before the videos came out. Now, if you wonder how that happens, happens all the time. 
And, uh, you know, it was just one of those things. And, you know, I broke the law and I got me a, what do you call it, a pirated copy. I'm confessing. I sinned. Uh, but I didn't, I didn't go to the movie theater, and, and I could watch it over and over again before it really came out. And there's a problem with that. We're going to read this story in John chapter 19 as we've gotten to verse 19. And let's go to verse 16, though. Then delivered he him there unto them. That's Pilate delivered Jesus to the chief priest. He delivered he him therefore unto them to be crucified. And they took Jesus and led him away. And he, bearing his cross, went forth, look at that word, into a place called the place of a skull, which is called uh, in the Hebrew Golgotha. Notice it's into. Who carried it unto? That was Simon. We looked at that in, in Matthew 27, you know, 29 to 23, Mark 15, 16 through 22, Luke 23, 26, Genesis 22. We saw the picture where uh, you've got Isaac and Abraham and, and uh, the wood is put on that ass and that ass carries it unto the mountain. And then, the, you know, he says, you stay here. And he takes, Abraham takes the wood off of the ass. He lays it upon his son, his only son. And and he carries it up the mountain. And that's the prophetic picture of what you see in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Listen, whoever wrote this Bible knew what was going to happen. Whoever wrote this Bible was particular in the detail that we needed to see. And that's what we get if we just believe the Bible and we don't change it or try to think that we know more than God about it. So as he goes in, verse 18, where they crucified him. And two other with him on either one side, and Jesus in the midst. And Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross. And the writing was, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. That's the writing that he puts over the cross. Well, they're going to have a problem with that. It doesn't say he said he was. And it says, it says Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. And listen, even lost people can give you truth. And that's what you've got here. Verse 20. This title then read many of the Jews. For the place where Jesus was crucified was nigh to the city. It was written in Hebrew and Greek and Latin. The three languages, the main languages at that time. Then said the chief priest of the Jews. Now notice it's the chief priest of the Jews. It's no longer God's priest. It's the priest of the Jews. Write not the king of the Jews but that he said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, what I have written, I have written. You see now, you know, Pilate before, he's just doing whatever they want. He says, I, 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 it's an innocent man. I find no fault. I find no fault. I find no fault. He says it three times. But what's he going to do? He's going to crucify him. He's going to allow them to take Jesus and crucify him on that cruel cross because he allows man to decide what to do. Now, of course, we know it's the fulfillment of Scripture. We know that. But you've got to understand the accountability is still there because Pilate has the choice. You see, if Pilate would have fought against it and not allowed Jesus to be crucified, he still would have been crucified. But, woe be to the man that, that did it. And, and, and Judas Iscariot, he didn't have to betray the Lord. He was a devil from the beginning. He didn't have to betray him. He always had a choice. And then when he dipped the sop, Jesus said what he said to him. And he said, that thou doest, doest quickly. But he's not saying, hey, you have no choice. You still have a choice. You don't have to leave this room. You don't have to betray me. It is all a choice, and that is what is so reprehensible about those that say that, that we don't have uh, a free will. Of course we have a free will. If you don't have a free will, everything you do is God's fault. Well, Lord, I had no choice. Well, it was preordained. I despise that teaching. Because it, it, it's like, well, I don't, need to, uh, I don't need to talk to people about the Lord. Why do I have to talk to somebody about the Lord? Oh, well, you're commanded to do it. No, I mean, why do I have to talk to them? Their blood can never be on my hands. Why? Their blood's on God's hands. God created them to go to hell. That's the real teaching if you really understand what it teaches. It's a heresy. Verse 22. Pilate answered, 
What I have written, I have written. Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus. Notice that. You don't have a lot of detail. He is satisfying the demands of God's holiness. He's satisfying the demands of God's law. This whole thing is not between you and Jesus or me and Jesus. This whole thing is between God the Father and God the Son. And that's what you need to understand. That's why it just says, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments and made four parts to every soldier. They have four soldiers there that we know of. A part, and, and also his coat. Now the coat was without seam, woven from top throughout. They uh, said, therefore, among themselves, let us not rend it, but cast lots for it, whose it shall be, that the Scripture might, might be fulfilled. Now notice that, that the Scripture might be fulfilled. This whole thing's about fulfilling Scripture. I, I want to show you some, because I, I may not get to it. So uh, look at verse 36. For these things were done that the Scripture should be fulfilled. A bone of him shall not be broken. Look at the next verse. And again, another Scripture saith, they shall look on him whom they pierced. Why doesn't it say fulfilled? Because when Jesus comes back, the fulfillment is they're going to look on him whom they've pierced. It's not all fulfilled yet. It just says the Scripture saith, because the fulfillment was a prophetic statement that would be fulfilled in the future. It's important to understand these things. Your Bible is written and doesn't need to be rewritten. Your Bible is perfect and doesn't need to be impure or, or changed in any way. So they cast lots. And I, I've told you this, I, I fought the gambling thing up in, 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 in Alabama where they, they wanted a lottery. You know, you bring a lottery and, oh, you raise all this money for schools. Yeah, but what about all the money that you spend on people that are doing things because they're addicted to gambling? Now, that never goes into the equation, but, it, but there are statistics out there. And it's a, it, it's a regressive tax. It's a tax on poor people because most rich people don't want know the odds, and they don't play. But there's a lot of people that'll go in there and they'll spend their children's uh, lunch money on it, or, or you know, the grocery money, or the rent money. And, and, and listen, these are the, the last time in your Bible you have gambling is right there. That's an amazing thing. You want to know what I think of gambling? I think, the th I think it right. And listen, I used, to, I used to play blackjack a lot. I was really good. There are people that will come through here and they'll tell you, when I was in the dormitories, people owed me thousands of dollars. I'd, I'd say, okay, you know, you came in as uh, the dorm, not the dorm chief, what is he called? The guy that is overseeing it, the, the staff sergeant that comes in, into your dorm, and he's a uh, dorm, he's not a dorm chief, that's, what? I don't know what he is, but they, they would send him in, most of you guys were married, I, see I wasn't married until way after, so I was in the dorms. And, uh, and I'd, I'd win all this money, and then the guy'd say, well, I'll fix your car the rest of the time you're here. Okay, you don't owe me any money. And then I had, I had my own mechanic. You know, and, and so I won a lot of money. Listen, it could have been addicting. And, and, and it very well was. Then I got saved. And I was like, man, I don't want anything that's addicting. I don't want to do anything that's addicting. So, so no matter what, you know, you don't need games of chance if you believe that, that it's the wrong thing to do. And you look in your Bible and you go, what's the example of gambling? They cast lots for his garments. That's the last time you have it in there. Verse 25. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Cleophas, and Mary Magdalene. Three Marys right there. The Bible says in Mark 5.40 that the women are far off. So they're by the cross, but they're, you know, they're, they're pushed back. They're, they're women. They're not treated well by the Romans. I mean, you, you, people look at Christianity and they go, oh, you all don't te treat your women right. You don't wear a burqa. We don't say you have to cover every inch of your body. It'd be good to cover a whole lot more than is covered most of the time. It's just fact, especially during the summer. But... We treat our, you know, husbands love your wives. Husbands love your wives. Husbands love your wives. Three times a man told to love his wife. Why? Because a man struggles with loving his wife. Because he, we, don't, we don't understand what a woman needs. We don't understand what love is. Love is giving of yourself. 
For God so loved the world that he gave. What do we need to do? We need to give of ourselves. We need to remember to open our door. I just kicked myself in the rear. I try to. Bill, you are my example of examples. Even with a hurt leg, you get around that car. I try to get over. Sometimes I'm coming across. They're driving up. I try to get to the door first. Very rarely. I can probably beat them now. I'm going to watch next time. But he opens the door for Anita, and listen, that's good. And if you don't open the door for your wife, you know, open the door when she goes into the, you know, the store or something. I, I, it's easier. For me, it's like this. Now, I just, this, is, this is my thinking. I'm sorry. I, re, I repent, Lord. I need to get the air conditioning on as soon as possible. Why would I want to put my wife into a car that's heated up, and then i got to get around the car, i got to get in, i got to start the car. So that's always been my thinking. Now, my wife doesn't, she's looking at me like, listen, buddy, open that car door. She'll go, she'll go like this every now and then, <clears throat> on the way to the car. <clears throat> and I go, oops, oops, oops. So I, you know, I try, but I, I did have a philosophical reason that made a whole lot of sense to me. Now, historically, I had auto start on my cars, but, you know, these, these cars, I don't have auto start. I, I'm going to put auto start on my car so that I can satisfy myself starting the car and putting my wife into a car that has air conditioning running. That would be a good idea. Verse 26, when Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by, uh, by whom he loved... That's John. As we know, John writes in the, in the second, third person. He saith unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Now, in John 2, verse 4, the, the, about the wine, he calls her woman. He, um, he never really calls her mother. Now, he, she's not the mother of God. She's the mother of Jesus. But one of the problems we have is that sometimes things get so perverted that we err on the opposite side. We go, oh, well, Mary is venerated. Well, all, all people shall call her, all generations shall call her blessed. So you don't go on the opposite extreme. We have a tendency to do that. Do you know what Mary is? Mary is blessed uh, among women. Mary uh, was chosen to birth the Son of God. What an amazing thing to think about that God chose her. But you need to understand this. Hold your place here and look at Luke chapter 1. You've got to keep everything in context. You can't say, well, you know, because Mary's like that, uh, you know, we need, to, we need to lift her up and pray to her. And Listen, you can't pray to Mary. Mary can't hear a billion prayers at one time. Mary might be able to hear one prayer. The Bible says we have a cloud of witnesses. Maybe God opens up uh, you know, the clouds and lets you know, people in heaven look down and, and see what's going on in one localized area. I don't know. But I know this. She is not God. There is no immaculate conception. She was not born without sin. How do I know that? Because the Bible makes sure that we know that. Look at Luke chapter 1. Verse 47, 46. And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior, for he hath regarded the low estate of his handmaid. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. You and I need to call Mary blessed. But we need to realize that she needed a Savior. You know, the Bible says that she brought the offering, the sin offering, after her son was born, after her first son was born. There were other children. I've had people talk to me and said, boy, the Bible teaches that, I, that, 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 she had brothers and, that he had brothers and sisters. Jesus did. Wow, that's news to me because they were raised to think in the perpetual virginity of Mary. There is no perpetual virginity. And my comment always is this. Anything that takes your eyes off of Jesus is not of God. If you're praying to a saint, you know what you've done? You've taken your eyes off of Jesus and put it on that saint. I don't care who the saint is. If he's the saint of, uh, of making pure apple pies and you're making an apple pie and you're, you're praying to the saint of apple pies and I'm trying to make it ridiculous because you've got to realize that's how ridiculous it gets. 
Oh, the patron saint or, uh, 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 of carpenters or the patron saint of driving your car. And I, I probably need that one. But you don't pray to anybody but God. You don't, go to a, you don't go to somebody and ask them to forgive your sins unless you've wronged them individually, but you still wrong God. And you go to God and you pray to God and you ask God to intervene. That's the way it's supposed to be. All generations shall call me blessed. Look at another verse there. Look at chapter 2 of Luke, chapter 2. Verse 40, well, 41. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the Feast of the Passover. Now notice that Joseph and Mary are the parents of Jesus. But Joseph's the stepfather. And that's why he's never called the father of Jesus by the Bible, by God. Verse 42, And when he, when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. And when they had fulfilled the days, as they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem, and Joseph and his mother knew not of it. Notice it's Joseph and his mother, not his mother and father. That's an important distinction. Why does your Bible read that way? You know, we would never say that. We would say Joseph and Mary. We would say his mother and father. If we didn't have God intervening on our behalf to make us a pure point, and that point is Joseph's not the father. It's important to understand that. So let's go back to the book of John. In John chapter 19, verse 26... When Jesus therefore saw his mother. That's why you've got to understand he's on the cross. He is, he is not defeated on that cross. He, he walked the whole way to the cross and he's talking to people on the left. And, and we may look at that in Matthew and, and Mark or Luke, whichever one. And he's talking to people and he's, he, he's, he's interacting with them. And his, held, his head, head is held high. It's important to understand that. He's not crawling on the ground. He's not falling under the weight of the cross. He's not even carrying the cross until the very end. When he gets to the mountain, he carries it into the, in, into the mountain. Woman, behold thy son, in verse 26, verse 27. Then saith he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour that disciple took her into his own home. Let me tell you something about the ministry. Sometimes those in the ministry fail with their own family. They get so focused on the ministry. Well, I got to be, you know, engaged in this ministry and I got to do this. And they let the children. Here's Jesus. He's pretty busy on the cross, right? I mean, he's, he's busy, you know. He's taking care of his mother. You don't neglect family for the ministry because family is the ministry. And that's, that, that's a hard lesson to learn for many people. That, you know, they're, they're oh, I'm gung-ho and I want to give all my all to God. All right, give it all starting at home. That's the way it's supposed to start. And many uh, ministers have failed in that. Verse 28, after this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the Scripture might be fulfilled. Notice that, the Scripture might be fulfilled. Remember I showed you in verse um, 37, it says, the Scripture saith, because it wasn't fulfilled yet. That's so important. The Bible is so defined and definite. Verse 29, now there was set a vessel full of vinegar. I don't know about you, but I have never quenched my thirst with vinegar. And they filled a sponge with vinegar and put it upon hyssop and put it uh, to his mouth. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he saith, it is finished. He's like this, his head's up, and he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Why does it tell us he bowed his head? Because we're not to get the picture that he's, he's up there and he's just, he's defeated. No, he's not. You know, crucifixion didn't kill Jesus. The two on either side had to have their legs broken. Why? So that crucifixion killed him. Jesus gave up the ghost. 
Jesus said it is finished, and then he gave up the ghost. Jesus is in control the whole time, all the way on the, on, on the path there. When he gets there, when he's on the cross, he's giving out, you know, he's telling John, take care of, uh, 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 this is your mother now. Take care of my family. He's not up there, you know, and, and, and sometimes we get to look at it, you know, the, the, the Passion of the Christ, the movie, and you, you, you see the beauty. Oh, it made me feel so, so hurtful. And I understood what Jesus did. No, you didn't understand. You can't trust in his suffering to save you. You trust in the fact that he shed his blood for your sins. Not that he suffered on the cross. And what they've done is they've gotten your focus off of the Jesus of the triumphant Jesus onto the suffering Jesus, and they emphasize the suffering and the suffering and the suffering, and that is the depiction that you have. And listen, it could be realistic to some degree. Although no man can describe in reality what it looked, his visage was so marred. But before that, he's a pretty Jesus. And before that, the Bible says there's no beauty in him that we should desire him. There is no pretty Jesus. He was a carpenter. He worked outside. Oh, by the way, carrying a cross. Do you know what he probably did as a carpenter? He didn't go to Lowe's. He didn't go to... What was it, West Buy? What was that, West? West Building Supplies? That's going to that's gonna date me. He didn't go there. He went out in the woods and cut down a tree, and as big as he could get it, he put it around him, and he drug that thing back, and then they built furniture with it. That's Jesus. You think, he, listen, he could have carried his cross. They looked at him, and they said, Hmm, I don't think he's going to be able to carry a cross. They came out of, out of the judgment hall and Simon was there and they put the cross on him. I showed you that last week. It is so important to understand it because, because what you've got when religion teaches stories, they teach it from their own human perspective. When your human perspective comes and clashes with the reality of, of who God is, you got a problem with your perspective. No problem with God. And I'm not going to be able to get to where I wanted to go. Yeah, I am. Look at Matthew 27. Matthew 27, verse 27. Be careful when you read the Bible. Let's just read it. Verse 27. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall and gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers. All the soldiers were there. And they stripped him. Why they do that? They're mocking him. And they put on him a scarlet robe. Mockery. And when they had plaited a crown of thorns. Mockery. They put it upon his head and reed in his right hand. And they bowed the knee before him and mocked him saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And they spit upon him and took the reed and smote him on the head. And after that, they had mocked him. They took the robe off from him, put his own raiment on him, and led him away to, be cruci to crucify him. And as they came out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name. Him they compelled to bear his cross. That's what I'm telling you. We looked at it last week. But I just want you to see that you don't get this depiction in John. Why? In John... He's king. You see, in Matthew, he is depicted as a man, so you, you see more of the suffering and you're giving, given more of the story. God knows what he's doing when he writes his Bible. Look at Luke chapter 23, and with this we'll close. Luke chapter 23. Look at um, verse 28. Luke 23, 28. Jesus, turning unto them, said, Now here he is walking along, daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming in the which they will say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bear and the paps which never gave suck. Then shall they begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us and to the hills, cover us. This is, this is him while he's on the way to Calvary. Or Golgotha. 
For if they do these things in a green tree, what shall be done to the dry? And they, and there were also two other male factors le- led with him to be put to death. By the way, even the commas are important in the Bible. If you take the commas out of verse 32 and it says two other male factors, what does that mean? Jesus won too. Two other, comma, male factors, comma. Isn't that amazing how the Bible is written and you can't even change a comma without making Jesus a sinner? That's why we don't change the Bible around here. Verse 33. And here's another reason why we don't change the Bible. And when they were come to the place which is called what? Say it. How do you know about Calvary? We sing at Calvary, right? How do you know about Calvary? Because it's in your Bible one time, right here. One time it's in your Bible. Yes, it's Golgotha. Yes, it's the place of a skull. But you know what that place is called? It's called Calvary. You know why we sing about Calvary? Because you're told about it in the Bible. One time, right here. Do you know that this is the that most modern versions take Calvary out right there? The NIV says the place of a skull. Is it the place of a skull? Yes. But let me tell you something. If you don't have Calvary in this verse, you have no Calvary anywhere in your Bible. Because this is the only time it's in there. God did that. So they came to a place called Calvary. There they crucified him. The male factors, one on the right hand and the other on the left. You need to understand that's what the Bible says. And you do not need it changed. You need it believed. We don't need to change it at all. We need to believe every jot, every tittle, every comma. Everything that's in it needs to be believed and understood and followed. Amen. I need to go ahead and stop. I, don't want, I want to start on time for the morning service. Let's pray. Lord, we do thank you for your many blessings. Thank you for sending your son to die on the cross. We just pray for your will to be done. In Jesus' name and for his sake, amen. Go ahead and be dismissed. Um, We won't have any music or anything. And we will start again at about 11 o'clock.